Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another resource review with Sarah Riel. My name is Danielle. I'm the Community Connections Coordinator. And today we are joined by Rebecca, who is with the YMCA YWCA of Winnipeg. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So nice to see your face. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and joining us today. Um, I was really excited to get you uh, onto the resource reviews because I feel like mental health isn't something that people necessarily associate with the YMCA, YWCA of Winnipeg. So how is mental health being incorporated into the programming there? Mm -hmm, right, so um, mental health has actually been a part of um, the YMCA, y YWCA community programs roster since uh, the 80s actually. Um, but one of the reasons why people don't know too much about it is it actually is quite a small program, I would say, in comparison to many of the other mental health programs in the city. Um, we're actually only three staff in the building. Um, and we run um, a small program serving a couple of hundred of pe hundreds of people um, in Winnipeg per, per month. Um, and basically just to kind of describe um, the basics of our program, um, there's kind of two sides of what we offer. So on my side, um, my title is, you know, skills teaching specialist, sounds really important. <laughs> um, and basically on that side is teaching classes um, on mental health and on um, life in general. So things like understanding and managing anxiety, coping with depression, building self-esteem, managing anger, uh, communicating in relationships, uh, spiritual journeys, um, lots of other programs that are really just um, working towards helping people um, be able to cope with their symptoms. Um, and something that we often teach about is that it's not necessarily about, you know, completely getting rid of the things that you're experiencing. It's becoming more comfortable with them and learning to um, understand why these things, you know, exist in your body or are coming up for you, um, helping them understand that and helping them manage it a little bit better so that it doesn't, you know, overtake their life um, and overtake their experiences um, and help them, you know, recover, enjoy life a little bit, and perhaps, you know, re-socialize um, back into the community after they've learned to manage whatever they've been dealing with. So that's the one side. Um, outside of that, I often work with people one-to-one -one as well if they have, like, specific issues that they're dealing with that um, I'm not covering in the classroom because, you know, if I'm working with 10, 15, 20 people, um, sometimes it is a little bit more vague, the information. So sometimes I do work with folks one-to-one -one outside of the classroom um, to work on, you know, problem solving or resource referral or whatever it may be. Um, and then on the other side, it's actually funny. Um, there's two Rebecca's in the center. We're only three people, but there's two Rebecca's. So it gets really confusing. Um, but she's in charge of our leisure programming. And our leisure programming um, is mostly um, to be able to support uh, your mental health in a way where you get out of your own head, you socialize with other people, you actually have fun. Um, because, you know, if you've experienced depression before or if you've experienced other difficult symptoms of mental illness, then you know that um, sometimes it's difficult to um, have fun and um, have fun with other people and experience joy and pleasure. Um, so that's mostly what those groups are about is just, you know, getting out of your own head, enjoying your time with other people, being the social um, beings that we are and building some sort of sense of belonging with people. They do things like celebrating birthdays, board games. Um, they sometimes do like wiener roasts out in the park. Um, uh, Rebecca is also in charge of our annual barbecue as well. Um, last year, we um, brought back a tradition of doing both Thanksgiving and, and Christmas dinners. Um, they hadn't done that for a couple of years, but um, I'm actually the person in my in my home family that's always in charge of that. Um, so I said, you know, I got to be the mama to this group of people. Um, and so we ended up making um, a whole a whole dinner for everybody on Thanksgiving and Christmas or around those times. Um, so those things to have fun as well. That sounds so great. So <laughs> what it really sounds like is it's a place where people can go to belong. Right, for Absolutely. sure. I definitely believe that. Yeah, build their social circle, be part of a community and, and feel safe and in a place where people understand that not every day is going to be a great day, but we're going to do what we can to make it the best day possible. 
I right. love that. That's so fantastic. So what are the eligibility requirements then for folks that might be interested in joining either program? Right. So um, we're pretty open, honestly, um, when it comes to eligibility. Um, you can either self-refer or you can be referred by a doctor or a support worker or a psychologist or basically any person that's supporting you or, or just refer yourself. Um, we do ask that you are experiencing some um, symptoms um, of mental illness or have been diagnosed with some form of mental illness, um, just because we you know, want to make sure that it's a safe and comfortable space for folks who um, do have those experiences and don't want those experiences to be stigmatized. Um, so we do want to make sure that people who are coming um, are having those difficulties or those challenges and you know, not just coming to um, you know, spend time at a nice place <laughs> where it's well Welcoming. Um, although, you know, we sometimes make exceptions for that too. Uh, but we do want folks who are willing to learn, able to participate in a group setting, able to socialize or learn, depending on which track they've chosen. Um, but they do need to be able to, you know, um, participate in a group. Um, and that's what I usually talk about when it comes to the eligibility, not necessarily any specific diagnosis, but just being able to be in the recovery stages of mental health. Um, we are not a crisis center at the moment. Um, we can refer out when it comes to crisis that comes about, which does, you know, sometimes happen in our um, workplace, in our environments, but we don't have the capacity or all the skills to be able to manage those things. So we'll refer out if it is a crisis situation. Um, or if somebody is kind of in the beginning stages of their symptoms or their diagnosis, we will give them information. Um, but the programs that we currently have are a little bit further along in the um, recovery process. So um, not, you know, experiencing those, you know, super challenging symptoms, but working towards being able to manage them, participating in groups and such. Okay, excellent. That's such good information to know um, that especially about where it's for people who are kind of in that active recovery and not being for crisis because sometimes if you're in crisis and you go to the wrong place, it does not help the crisis and makes it a little bit worse. Right. So, and something, sorry, I just wanted to add something. Yeah. Um, I've been doing like lots of research on, you know, um, us being a trauma informed environment. And I think that um, it's important to note that um, one of the reasons that we like don't do crisis work is we don't have like a housing worker, for example, or we don't provide, um, you know, food on a regular basis to members. Um, and a part of trauma recovery is first getting to that stage of like safety um, and comfort first, which people need food people need a safe place to sleep, people need um, housing, those types of things first, which we don't have, um, you know, the ability to work on full time. So we would refer out to those types of things. Um, but being trauma informed and working on that safety piece first is a really important part of um, the way that we are. I think transitioning now is making sure that we're building those resources and that information to provide um, and just, you know, being able to, you um, have people at the center who are um, set up and feel safe because if somebody's learning about anxiety, for example, and their anxiety isn't going away with the tools that we're teaching, we might have to go back to the drawing board and realize they are, you know, self um, couch surfing or, you know, eating once per day or whatever it is. And that means that the skills that we teach in our classroom aren't going to work because their body is not at a place of safety. So we need to go back to the, the basics of human beings, the basics of our basic human needs. Incredible. That is, that's fantastic. I love that you guys are taking so much care into making sure that people are getting what they need from your programs and, you know, recognizing that even if you might not be the totally right one to, you know, refer out to others. That's fantastic. So with your programs, where do they all take place? Great. So um, we're actually in the lower level. So um, the basement, but lower level sounds better of the Salvation Army building um, down, uh, downtown. It's actually right across from the um, downtown YMCA gym. Um, oftentimes people, uh, you know, um, mix up the two, uh, but we're right across the street in the basement of uh, 
the Salvation Army Training Center, and um, upstairs is like a the Booth University Library, and we're in that building. It's a red brick building, and we're in the lower level in an um, in a little office. Uh, there's a classroom, a kitchen, and a couple of offices and a storage room, and that's us. So it's kind of like you know, um, little little place with not too many people, um, <laughs> but where we hopefully are welcoming um, folks who would like to belong. And it is accessible, right? Like there's a wheelchair access as well, if I recall. It is, yeah. So there's an elevator, which is great. Um, yeah, it is an older building, so sometimes that is difficult, but it is wheelchair accessible for sure. We have um, a couple of members who do participate that are in wheelchairs. Okay, excellent. So what does a participant, what can a participant expect when they get involved in a program? Right, so um, they, I guess this sounds... Um, weird or interesting maybe, but they um, can expect to be like taken care of and to be um, kept an eye out for. Um, like you might think of it as a like a little bit uh, nosy, but I'm actually very curious about people's lives and very curious about who they are and very curious about where they would like to go. Um, and I very much care about people. So they can expect to be cared about. I know that sometimes when you do come from an environment or a household or have lived your life where you perhaps were neglected or have a trauma history or um, you know haven't been cared for as you deserve. Um, it might, might be a little bit intimidating at first. I'm just like, tell me about your life. Like, I just want to be your friend. Um, but I try to create that like environment where I really get to know you and get to know the people. Um, we're not so clinical. We're definitely trying to create an environment where it's like family oriented, even though it's not in a house. Um, it kind of feels like a little bit of a home. That's what people I've described before is, is that it's, you know, pretty family oriented. Um, but something that I think also people can expect is that um, it is a place where we do encourage people to learn and grow, um, especially when it comes to managing their symptoms, because if you're just doing the you know, same things in either neglecting to manage your symptoms or same things in managing your symptoms, but nothing is changing or nothing is making a difference, then we will be having those conversations and trying to move you forward in managing some of those symptoms. So I, um, I do ask and encourage people to think about the fact that they will need to grow or try to grow or do their best to grow at whatever pace works for them. If it's slow, um, we've had a couple of members that have been involved in, you know, all of the classes for at this point, I think like a year and a half, um, starting to realize the differences in their, their own lives right now. Um, but they have, you know, chosen to make quite a lot of changes in their life and chosen to talk to themselves differently and, you know, create um, healthy relationships for themselves and do a lot of things um, that did make changes and required a lot of discomfort at first. Um, but it does require some growth to be able to grow in being able to manage your symptoms. Incredible. That is so fantastic. So how can people get in contact with you then if they have questions or they want to apply? How do they do that? Great. So um, there's a couple of different options online on the YMCA website. If you just Google like YMCA Winnipeg Mental Health, um, then we do have a um, online self-referral form that people can fill out um, with their information. Um, and then we'll contact them and set up an intake appointment to get to know them. Um, and then after that, um, they'll be able to kind of choose what they would like to get involved in. Um, or you could also, you know, email us. Um, so I could leave, you know, the phone number here um, directly to me at least is 204-989-4194. Or my name, which is Rebecca.Trudeau at ymanitoba.ca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A dot T-R-U-D-E-A-U. Everybody knows how to spell that one <laughs> at ymanitoba.ca. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'll make sure that we put all of that information in the description below so people can uh, just copy and paste it. That's nice and easy. Uh, thank you so much for chatting with us today. This was such great information. Before I let you go, though, I do have one final question to ask you. I see that you are working from home today. So what would you say is your favorite uh, maybe home knickknack or just favorite thing from home? Right. <laughs> 
Um, so I think maybe I will turn my screen a little bit, um, ignore the things on the floor. So um, I'll just point at my TV stand here. Um, and basically what, um, why it's my favorite is um, during the uh, lockdown, um, during the pandemic, um, or at least when it started opening up a little bit, but still things weren't, um, you know, completely open. Um, me and my partner started to develop a lot of random hobbies. Um, and what we ended up doing was um, buying this at MCC um, in uh, East Kildona. And then we ended up um, stripping it completely of the paint and the stain. And then we sanded everything down and then we restained it. <laughs> Um, we like to make jokes that I'm a grandmother and he's a grandfather. So we you know we're listening to old 50s music and staining our furniture <laughs> um, from the 70s during um, the break. So I just absolutely love it. I'm super into like mid-century modern furniture and stuff. There's the legs. The legs yeah. are my favorite things. It's like space age style legs. I, yeah. That was the first thing I noticed. I was like, that looks like an old dresser. <laughs> it is very old. Yeah, I'm very old at heart. Um, that's something I like to let members know about. I'm, I'm oftentimes the youngest person in the room, but I make jokes that I have a lot of strands of wisdom in my hair, lots of gray hair, um, and uh, hopefully can support them. Even though I am a little bit younger, I've experienced a lot of things, so hopefully can support them still, even though there is a little bit of an, an age difference. <laughs> That's incredible. Thank you again so much, Rebecca. This has been so great getting to know you and the program. Again, we'll make sure we put all of that contact information in the description below. And that's going to be it. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you so much.